Hey everybody, welcome to this week's geography lesson. We are going to be talking about the zones of the Earth. So these are going to be the different places on the Earth's surface that get certain kinds of rays of the sun. So do you remember when we were talking about this chart last week? Well, we're looking here at the summer solstice right now, and do you see that line where the arrow is pointing to? That is the farthest north that the perpendicular rays of the sun will hit. That means any farther north than that, the surface of the earth is not getting any perpendicular rays of the sun. Now, when we look at the winter solstice, we can see that the northern hemisphere is tilted away from the sun, and that line where the red arrow is pointing to is the lowest, the furthest south on the face of the earth that gets perpendicular rays of the sun. Everywhere below that only gets oblique rays. Okay, you guys, so you might be wondering where on the surface of the Earth is this point that is the highest north the perpendicular rays will fall and the lowest south that the perpendicular rays will fall. Well, here I have a diagram of the Earth's southern hemisphere. Again, we live up here. The Earth's southern hemisphere is tilted towards the sun. So we are up here away from the sun. And this line here, man, this is our winter solstice, this line here is that lowest point and it's called the Tropic of Capricorn. So this is the point where the sun would stop and turn around and start going the other way in the sky, just like we learned in the earth as a sphere. So this is the farthest south that the earth will get perpendicular rays. All here, they're getting only oblique rays. And from here to the equator, they are getting per perpendicular rays. Now, when we look over here, this is our summer solstice. So you can see the sun's now on this side. We are tilted. We are right about here. We are tilted towards the sun. This is our summer solstice. And this line here was that top line that the red arrow was pointing to. This line here is the furthest north that gets perpendicular rays of the sun. And this line is called the Tropic of Cancer. Okay, so everything up here is getting oblique rays. Okay, and then from here to the equator, you're getting perpendicular rays. This is the angle between the equator and the Tropic of Cancer. And that's 23 and a half degrees. So it goes up 23 and a half degrees from here to the Tropic of Cancer. Same thing over here. It goes down 23 and a half degrees from the equator to the Tropic of Capricorn. Okay, all right, cool. So let's move on to our next chart. Your next question probably is, is when exactly does this happen during the year? So I have some dates on either side of my chart here. Okay, and we're gonna start here on March 21st. March 21st is the same position as our spring equinox, okay? So the Earth is in this position on March 21st. And we can see that the perpendicular rays of the sun, that they're represented by these little yellow circles are falling right here around along the equator okay right here along the equator now after spring is what summer so we can see here on june 21st june 21st is when the perpendicular rays of the sun are going as north as they possibly can so this is the point where the rays of the sun are going as far north as they possibly can, and that's this position. Right here. So see this line? That's that same line on the other map. This is the farthest north that those perpendicular rays are going to get. Everything else up here is going to be oblique, all right? So then we can go over here to September 22nd. 
because you remember June 21st is when all the rays are sitting or hitting right here on the Tropic of Cancer. The Earth continues to go around the sun and we end up here, September 22nd. And this is going to be our autumn or our fall equinox. And that's right here. Oh, sorry, my wooden spoon. And that's right here where we have equal days and equal nights. On or about September 21st, the perpendicular rays are shining right here along the equator. But the Earth continues to go around the sun and we end up here around December 22nd. December 22nd is our winter solstice and this is the farthest south the perpendicular rays of the sun will get. Right on this line. Okay, and on this chart, that's right here. Remember the red arrow? This is the farthest south those perpendicular rays are going to get. Everything else here is oblique. So only from the equator to the Tropic of Capricorn, remember that's what that line was called, are getting perpendicular rays of the sun. So December 22nd, everything's shining. Perpendicular rays is the farthest south on the Earth that they're going to go. And then after winter is what? Well, it's spring. We come back to our spring equinox where the perpendicular rays of the sun are back shining right on the equator. And the days and nights are about the same length. And we know the earth continues to rotate. So the days get a little bit longer and the nights get a little bit shorter until we get to June 21st, our summer solstice, where we have our longest day and our shortest night and the perpendicular rays are falling as far north as they will. See, we live right here about, so we're not getting any perpendicular rays, are we? No, we only ever get oblique rays of the sun. So on or about June 21st is our summer solstice when we have our longest day and our shortest night. But the earth continues to go around the sun and the days are getting a little bit shorter and the nights a little bit longer until on or about September 22nd, our fall or autumn equinox, we have equal day and equal night. And the earth keeps going around the sun and the days get a little bit shorter and the nights a little bit longer until we get to right here, December 22nd, which is our winter solstice when we have our longest night and our shortest day. And right along this line, that's how far south the perpendicular rays of the sun will hit until the earth keeps spinning and the days get a little bit longer and the nights a little bit shorter until we're back at our spring equinox. We have equal days and equal nights. Our spring equinox is March 21st on or about. It can sometimes change by a day or two each year. Our summer solstice is June 21st. Our autumn Equinox is on or about September 22nd. And our winter solstice is on or about December 22nd. Okay, so 21, 22, around there of those different months. Okay, so that is the different lines where the perpendicular rays of the sun will hit the farthest north, Tropic of Cancer, the farthest south, Tropic of Capricorn. Okay. Let's look at one more chart. Okay, so this is our zones chart. As you can see, we have the equator right here, and we have a teeny tiny zone up here, a green zone, a red zone, a red zone, a green zone, and a teeny tiny white zone down there, just like the top. So they kind of mirror each other. You know, if you were to fold this in half, they would touch each other. This red area is where the perpendicular rays of the sun fall. This is where they hit. And so that means this area is the hottest place on Earth. It gets so hot in this area that it's called the torrid zone. Torrid comes from an old Latin word torridus, which means parched or dried up. So it's super duper hot here. Okay, just about all year long. Now we also have areas on our earth where during at least part of the year, the sun never rises and never set or, or never sets. 
Remember we looked at that last time? And that was the north in the south pole, where when the north pole is tilted towards the sun, it's a perpetual sunrise or sunset. And when the south pole is tilted away, it's all darkness and then vice versa. So whenever a pole is tilted towards the sun, it's getting, you know, day all the time and the other zone is dark all the time. Well, we call these the frigid zones. It comes from an old Latin word, frigidus, meaning cold. And then we have these green areas. They're in between the frigid and the torrid zones, aren't they? And this area is neither necessarily hot or cold. These are called the temperate zones. And we live in the temperate zone. This is where we're only getting oblique rays of the sun all year long. So temperate comes from a Latin word as well, temperatus, which means to mix or blend. So these temperature zones have both hot and cold. So when we look at this, we have a northern torrid zone and a southern torrid zone, a northern temperate zone and a southern temperate zone, a northern frigid zone and a southern frigid zone. Okay, so we have six, one, two, three, four, five, six. We live in the northern temperate zone. Now this is not showing our half of the earth. This is showing Africa and Europe and Asia and Australia and the Pacific Islands. We're on the other side of the earth, but we live in the northern temperate zone. Okay, so again, torrid, the red two zones, the north torrid and the south torrid is where the perpendicular rays fall. Very, very hot here all year long. The green zones, the north temperate and the south temperate, these are a mix. These are both hot and cold here. Remember, we have a winter and a summer and a spring and a fall. And then we have the north frigid and the south frigid. And that's where it's pretty darn cold, okay? There's a big part of the year where they don't get any sunlight and a big part of the year where it's day, daytime all day. It's wild. So yeah, we can see our zones of the earth. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. I know school is ending, but I'd be happy to still answer questions. And um, if you would like for follow-up work, you can read more about the torrid zone and the temperate zone and the frigid zones. You can read more about the solstices and equinoxes if you haven't already done that. You can also read up more on the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. Yeah, maybe you can figure out, maybe there's some history out there where you can learn how they figured all these measurements out and when they figured them out. So that is my lesson for today. Again, let me know if I can do anything. You of course also can always draw and paint these charts. You just press pause on the video and take a look at them. Okay, all right my friends. My wooden spoon and I say goodbye to you and we'll talk to you later.